All right. All right. So before I begin, I want to start by naming that some of the things I'm going to be talking about today may be triggering to some individuals in the space. And while I in no way intend to upset anyone, I do intend to guide us through some discomfort that's likely to fester in this space. If at any point you do feel triggered, please take care of yourself in whatever way that looks like for you, because self-care is the most important thing. I'd like to start by telling you a story. A few years ago, I met a guy named Michael, and it was great. We met working for the same organization, and we instantly hit it off. Michael and I bonded over our favorite movies and Netflix shows. We had some friendly sports banter and really just had the same sense of humor. We formed a sort of relationship. After some time, I started to notice that the dynamic between Michael and I began to change. Whenever I would bring up my own ideas or opinions or thoughts about certain subjects, Michael would immediately dismiss me or tell me to stop talking about whatever it was I was bringing up. And when I told him that I didn't like the way that he was treating me, he'd insist that I was being oversensitive or that I was bringing about this treatment and it was completely my fault. Michael would even call me names, thinking he was being funny. And when I told him that I didn't think that those things that he was saying were very funny, again, he'd insist that I was overreacting and that he should be able to say whatever he wanted because freedom of speech. After a while, I really didn't say anything. When Michael would treat me this way, I just sort of sat there and took it. I was scared to say anything, so instead, I said nothing. Now, I want you to hold on to this story because we're going to come back to it. I want to talk to you now about a couple of concepts called power and control. Now, power is defined by an individual's ability to influence someone's behaviors or different events, while control is defined as an, as an individual's ability to specifically determine those behaviors. Now, I would argue that power and control shows up a lot in our modern U.S. society. We see it in our pop culture. We see it in our history textbooks. We see it in our favorite shows. But when I think of the words power and control, something that immediately comes to mind for me is the power and control wheel. Now, really quickly, by a show of hands, who here has heard of this tool? Okay, I see some hands. So just to be safe, let's go ahead and go over it. The power and control wheel is used by professionals to find patterns of abuse in, in intimate and romantic relationships. It comes from the Duluth Model, or the Domestic Abuse Intervention Project, which is an organization designed to increase awareness about and reduce the amount of violence against women. The power and control wheel combines physical violence, sexual, and emotional violence together to, to find those patterns that we're seeing of abuse in relationships. And when we look at the power and control wheel, I would say that the things that we see are pretty obvious. Things like emotional abuse, putting your partner down, making them feel bad about themselves, or making them feel guilty. Or minimizing, denying, or blaming, making light of the abuse, not taking the, your partner's concerns very seriously, or shifting the responsibility saying that they caused the abuse or even economic abuse, preventing your partner from getting a job or keeping a job, making them ask you for money or taking their money. I'm willing to bet that if any of you saw these patterns occurring in, a, in one of your friend's relationships, you'd probably have some reason for concern and be concerned about your friend. You'd probably talk to them about the patterns that you were seeing. You might do some research to figure out what exactly you are seeing and how you can effectively intervene. But most importantly, you do something about it. This is because generally, we collectively agree that abuse can happen in intimate romantic relationships. Most of us don't dispute it, and when we see it happening, we listen, we engage, and we act. I want to go back to the story that I was telling you about earlier, about the guy Michael that I met who was making me feel pretty small. By a show of hands, how many of you would say that there were some power and control dynamics occurring? And maybe some instances of abuse. Here's the thing. Michael and I were not in an intimate romantic relationship. Michael and I were just colleagues. He identified as a white man, just as I identify as a black woman. And the issues, experiences, and feelings that I was bringing up all centered around race and race relations in our country. Michael's whiteness 
And his inability to hear me when I was bringing up these concerns are really what ruined our relationship. You see, I met Michael around the time Black Lives Matter protests were breaking out across the country. And race became a subject that was really unavoidable. We saw it on our TV, we saw it on the news, we saw it with our politicians, it came up in social interactions, it was in the classroom, really it was unavoidable. Because of the friendship that I'd formed with Michael, I believed that I could bring up these issues with him because as a black woman, these were things that directly affected me. Clearly, I was wrong. And I very quickly became the object of Michael's abuse. In my experience, I meet a lot of really well-intentioned white people who care about racial equality and care about social justice. But when they try to engage in conversations about race, they either don't know how to do it effectively, or when they do, they operate as more of an abuser than as an ally. So I suggest that we do two things. Number one, I think we need to redefine what we include in interpersonal violence to include platonic relationships that occur across racial, racial differences. And two, white people, I think you need to be a little bit more thoughtful in how you engage with black people and really people of color in general when we're having conversations about race and oppression. Because let's take a look. The power and control wheel uses these specific things to define using intimidation tactics in intimate romantic partnerships. But aren't these things that white people do every day? Things like following black people in a store or crossing the street when you see black people up ahead, or the violence that is police brutality, or even using blatant racial slurs, saying things like, freedom of speech, and I wave the Confederate flag because heritage, not hate. Or even this, for minimizing, denying, and blaming, saying things like, I don't think that's actually what happened, or are you playing the race card again? If they would have just cooperated with the police, they wouldn't be dead. Or even no, all lives matter. Or what about this for using isolation? Whitewashing American and global history so that black people are not even a part of the picture. Mandating requirements for social security and welfare assistance. Controlling the images that we see of black people in our media, which are typically pretty negative. And gentrification. Pushing black people out of their own communities and then deeming these smaller, less wealthy communities as unfit or unsafe. White people, I'm going to make a demand of you right now. Stop hurting me. Because I want us to work together, but I can't when you are acting as an abuser. When you dictate and control our conversation and relationship dynamics, when you tone police me and say, I don't like the way that you said this, or I don't like the way you talked about this privilege, or why are you always so angry? <laughs> <laughs> when you minimize my experiences, saying, okay, well, not all white people, or my favorite, when you tell me how I'm allowed to respond to the oppression that I'm feeling, asking me that infamous question, well, what would Martin Luther King Jr. do? When you do all of these things, white people, you are using your power to control me. I believe that as human beings, we need to engage in relationship, especially when it comes to combating racial oppression. Relationship is fine and well, and we need to think about the way that we collaborate and be intentional in these relationships so that we can combat racism. But here's the thing, white people. Black people are done with your oppression, and we are not your victims. Again, relationship sounds great, but Hear me when I say, we will continue on with or without you. And when you dictate and control our relationship dynamics and overpower people and say that the feelings that I'm having are illegitimate or not real or assert your story over mine, white people, you're not listening. When you say things, when you say these things to me, when you assert that all lives matter over black lives matter, by people, you are potentially being the abuser in this relationship. I'd like now to tell you a story about what could have been. 
A few years ago, I met a guy named Michael, and he and I instantly hit it off. We bonded over our favorite TV shows and movies. We had some friendly sports banter, and really had the same sense of humor. It was great. Following the incessant murder of unarmed black people by white police officers in their communities, in their homes, near their schools, in their cars, in front of their families, Black Lives Matter protests began to break out across the country. I remember feeling a lot of pain and confusion, not really understanding what was going on, or feeling a lot of hurt about what I was seeing. I wanted to talk to Michael about this because we'd formed a friendship, and Michael listened. He never invalidated the things that I was saying or my experiences. He never told me my feelings weren't real. He even did his own work to figure out what had happened historically and how was this affecting what was happening today. So that he could be a part of a solution. Michael and I were able to engage in healthy race-based conversation, which allowed us to combat racial oppression together. White people, one day I hope to have this conversation with you. Thank you.